Hi, and welcome back to the channel. This week, we're covering psoriasis, a common dermatological condition we manage in primary care. The UK prevalence is about 2%, and it generally presents itself as dry, scaly patches, but there are significant links with arthropathy and cardiovascular disease. The causes of psoriasis aren't fully understood, but there is seem to be some genetic component, immunological and environmental factors also involved. Notably, it's recognised that stress or trauma worsens the conditions, whereas there are factors that improve it, like sunlight. When it comes to exacerbating factors, we know that trauma, alcohol, as well as drugs such as beta blockers, lithium, NSAIDs and ACE inhibitors worsen psoriatic features. When it comes to features, we often categorise psoriasis whether it's plaque psoriasis, which is the most common, usually with red scaly patches affecting the extensor surface, sacrum and scalp, flexural psoriasis, in which as the name says happens in flexures but the skin is smooth and non-scaly, guttate psoriasis, which is a temporary rash, usually in an erythematous fashion or raindrop appearance, typically after a streptococcal infection, or pustular psoriasis, which affects the skin on the palms and soles. As mentioned, psoriasis carries an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome and VTE, as well as an understandable psychological burden. Additionally, 10% of patients with psoriasis may go on to develop psoriatic arthritis. Another feature is nail changes, which is more common in psoriatic arthritis patients, but with signs such as pitting, onycholysis, subungual hyperkeratosis and nail loss being predominant features. Understanding the management of psoriasis is one of the key aspects of what you need to know for your exams and also in your career. NICE recommend a stepwise approach for treating patients with psoriasis, particularly chronic plaque psoriasis. Emollients are key and patients are encouraged to use it as much as possible to avoid scaling and itching. NICE recommend first line a potent topical corticosteroid once daily and a vitamin D analogue once daily, but applied at different times in the day. This is used between 4-8 to eight weeks where if there's no improvement, NICE recommend vitamin D analogues twice daily. Third line treatment would include a potent corticosteroid twice daily for 4 weeks or the inclusion of coal tar. Dithranol can also be considered at this point. After this point, secondary care management should really be sought. This often includes phototherapy, which is usually narrowband UVB light therapy, but this can cause ageing of the skin, as well as an increased risk of squamous cell cancer. Systemic therapy may also be considered, usually oral methotrexate or cyclosporin. This is particularly key if topical therapy and light therapy hasn't worked, or if there's significant impact on the patient's well-being, or if the psoriasis is that extensive. Generally speaking, methotrexate is often chosen first, unless there is a need for rapid resolution, or palmar plantar pustulosis, or if conception is being considered, in which cyclosporine is often preferred. Failing the above, NICE advocate the use of biological therapy, such as adalimumab, etanercept, or infliximab, but only if methotrexate, cyclosporin and light therapy have failed. You need to be aware of some of the cautions with topical medication we use. You're probably aware that topical steroids cause skin atrophy and striae, more so in the face, flexures and scalp, so their use should be limited. NICE recommend utilising a four-week break between courses of topical steroids. Vitamin D analogues work by reducing cell division and therefore reduce epidermal proliferation and can be used long term given the lack of side effects but they should be avoided in pregnancy. Dithranol works by inhibiting DNA synthesis but does stain if it's left on for a long period of time. Whereas coal tar is also thought to be inhibiting DNA synthesis but has a strong smell to it. We should also consider psoriasis referral criteria to secondary care. NICE advocate referral to the dermatology specialist if there is any diagnostic uncertainty, if there is more than 10% of body surface covered and it's deemed severe, if topical therapy doesn't work, if there's significant cosmetic or psychological impact, or if the patient is a child or a young patient. And that's that. We hope you enjoyed this whistle-stop tour of psoriasis. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and share it amongst your colleagues. Head over to our Instagram page, at dorky underscore docs, where there's a load more revision content. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.